Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Steve. You've probably seen me around here before. I used to teach Quest 45, and uh, when things get back to normal again, I'll be there again. I just love being able to tell Bible stories to kids. I know that this month, the theme has been kindness. I'm sure everybody has come up with some great ways that you can show kindness. And today's story is all about that idea. God wants us to be kind to everybody. And we know that's true because of one of the stories that Jesus told during his ministry. It's an example of one of his many parables. Parables are stories that Jesus told which were designed to teach people lessons. Because of the fact that Jesus had become kind of famous, he had lots of crowds following him. But the religious leaders were getting kind of nervous. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God, and they felt threatened. So often they'd follow him around and try to ask him difficult questions to try to trip him up and to show the people that maybe Jesus wasn't everything that they thought he was. Of course, Jesus always had answers. One day, Jesus was teaching a crowd, and an expert in the religious law came to him and asked him the question, Teacher, what must I do now to receive eternal life? <clears throat> Jesus asked the man what was written in the law. And the man answered with words from the scripture, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. Love him with all your strength and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Of course, that was the right answer. And Jesus told him that. But the man was deciding he was going to make himself look good. And Jesus looked bad by asking a follow-up question. And he asked the question, okay, who's my neighbor? And Jesus chose to answer that question by telling one of his parables. This parable is all about kindness. It may take us a while to see what this has to do with kindness, but let's just follow along. In Jesus' story, a man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. To understand the story a little bit better, we need to know something about that route. First of all, Jerusalem to Jericho is about 19 miles. To go from Jerusalem to Jericho required, of course, in those days, since there weren't cars, you either had to walk or ride a donkey. And Jerusalem to Jericho is about the same distance as from Discovery Church to Longmont. Anybody want to go for a quick walk to Longmont this morning? I don't think so. Uh, the other thing is that the road was really a nasty road. You were going downhill. It was about a 2,500 foot vertical drop from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as you went down, the countryside became drier and drier and rockier and rockier. So the road was very rocky, very narrow, and furthermore, there were a lot of bad people who hung out along that road. Because it was such a difficult road, robbers figured this would be a great place to hang out and catch people. So there was a real threat that if somebody was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, They'd get stopped by robbers, and often the robbers would take their belongings and beat them up and leave the people along the side of the road. It was sometimes called the bloody road for that reason. In Jesus' story, the robbers did attack the man, beat him up, and left him almost dead. The poor dude was just lying there, hurt on the side of the road. And as he came to, the story goes, he looked around and saw coming up the hill from Jericho, 
somebody who he recognized as a priest. And he was thinking, hooray, I'm going to be saved. This guy is going to help me. There's not going to be a problem, and I'll be able to be on my way. But you know what happened? The priest went to the other side of the road and just ignored him. Now, again, understanding about this road, that was a really tough thing to do because along the way, that road was very narrow. And one of the sources I read said that if you wanted to ignore somebody on that road, you'd actually have to step over them to get past them if you were going in the opposite direction. So it wasn't like the priest just happened to miss him. The priest deliberately, as Jesus tells the story, deliberately ignored him. Well, you might say, and I was thinking about this, can you imagine a man of God going past somebody in obvious distress and just ignoring him? That isn't what most of us would think of as what a man of God would do. Well, having seen that happen, a little while later, Jesus' story goes, he saw another man coming by. This man was a Levite. Now, Levites were, again, leaders in the religious society. The Levites were often people who led worship in the temples or took care of the grounds or various other important religious duties. And he said, okay, now I'm going to be safe. And he looked, he saw the Levite coming up the hill and was thinking, okay, this is going to be good. And you know what happened? Exactly the same thing happened again. The Levite just ignored him and went past him. And at this point, the traveler was pretty darn unhappy and pretty upset. I mean, it's really kind of disturbing if you think about it. Not one, but two religious leaders who have gone past him, ignored his plight, and just gone on about their business. Well, later on, somebody else came by. At this point, he wasn't too optimistic that anything good was going to be happening. And then he saw the person who was coming by was not a religious leader at all, but a Samaritan. Now, in those days, Samaritans were a group of people that did not get along with the Jews. In fact, the Samaritans although they had common ancestors with the Jews, were basically their enemies. And Jews didn't hang out with Samaritans. Samaritans didn't hang out with Jews. And they tried to have as little to do with each other as they possibly could. So the optimism for getting help is pretty small at that point. But in Jesus' story, it was finally the Samaritan who chose kindness. He felt sorry for the man who was lying along the road. He bandaged the man's wounds. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he could rest. And then the Samaritan came back the next day and paid the man's bill at the inn and made sure that everything was okay. Now, Remember why Jesus started this story in the first place? He was answering the legal expert's question, who is your neighbor? And Jesus turned that question right back on the law expert. He said, now, which one of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who was traveling? Of course, the legal expert answered, it was a Samaritan. And Jesus told the man, go and do so. Be a neighbor to everyone. Everyone who needs to show them God's love is your neighbor, whether they look like you, act like you, or believe like you. This story is so famous 
that you've probably heard the expression Good Samaritan applied to somebody who stops by to help a stranger for no apparent reason and help them out. But it's really even more than that because not only was this person good, he was a Samaritan, which is somebody who shouldn't have really been wanting to help a traveling Jewish person, but he did, and he stopped and helped him. In fact, it's so important to remember that there are lots of places that are named after this person from the story. In fact, just down 144th to where it turns into Dillon Road, there's a hospital named Good Samaritan. It's all about providing kindness and help to people who need it. The whole point of the story is that anyone, anyone at all that you meet is your neighbor. We shouldn't just show kindness to people who are like us. We should show kindness to everyone we meet. So <clears throat> we can remember that. We should pray to God that we remember this lesson because it's important to show kindness to all.